Yeah, many thanks uh, for staying with us. You're still watching New Dawn on Open State Television. On 4th of October uh, 2021, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram and WhatsApp uh, faced a long six-hour outage, uh, second time uh, this year. And it needs to be stated that the consequences were uh, pretty high. Uh, but what uh, were the consequences? And that's uh, where we're going on the program. Uh, social media blackouts are uh, counting losses. That's the topic. And to uh, tell us more about that, uh, it's Mr. Shumzat, a tech business development manager, at Data Science Nigeria co-founder, iFrameworks consulting technology and strategy consultant with focus on data science and artificial uh, intelligence. Uh, you welcome to the program. Well, thank you very much. Sir. Um, it's good to be here. Okay, now let, let's start on that note. Uh, it, came, it came as a shock for six hours. Uh, people couldn't, you know, connect, couldn't mm. chat, mm. and. Some people actually thought uh, it was their devices. Mm. Uh, maybe I don't know someone who bought a new phone. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just for six hours. The blame initially was put on a telecommunication company. So it was later when we saw on Twitter, when Facebook, you know, tweeted, uh, we, uh, we got an inkling of mm. what uh, was happening. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the consequences. Okay. Um, uh, thank you very much. So basically, let's try to lay a foundation basically about about the economic impact of social media blackout. You know, right now we still order and thirty something days after, you know, after the Twitter ban, right? And it's been recorded that Nigeria has made so much loss. Um, actually, we lose about hundred dollars plus every every day, right? And, and it's just quite amazing the kind of money that that is lost based on that. Uh, and basically there, there's a lot of impact because number one, once you affect the communication of people, right? That's how business is based on communication. And once that is cut off, it's very, very difficult. It's really when you're cut off from the rest of the world, right? Um, there's a site called NetBlockers. You can use it to check amount, amount, the amount that Nigeria does on Twitter alone. I'm not talking about, because basically the, shop, the, the blackout you were talking about affected um, WhatsApp, Instagram, and, Facebook. and Facebook, right? And that, those are the most powerful um, platforms in the world when it comes to communication and connecting with friends, right? A lot of people have built a lot of um, solutions, not just solutions, friendships, connections, based on those platforms. And just about two hours of, of it being cut off, it's, it's just amazing the amount of value has been lost. Right, so number one, businesses, you can't do business again apart from the fact that that's connectivity some people actually build their entire applications and solutions on the apis of twitter of whatsapp of, of um, instagram so mm -hmm. once those solutions are down it means that for that period of time their solutions are also down so whatever amount of money they make per minute or per day automatically goes down mm -hmm. and becomes um, yeah um, you, you talked about what we lose uh, owing to a twitter ban mm -hmm. you know, per day yeah. and one one would wonder uh, twitter is a micro blogging site yeah. Yeah. Uh, unlike uh, facebook uh, google instagram we have i mean lots of adverts mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so how do we lose this okay so it's very good. with vpn because that yes. 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 Yeah. yeah so so it's very great that that we that we even talk about because um, the research is quite rooted but one um, and a lot of people are crediting you know, organizations like EIE for be the one to calculate that like oh what those guys did was they shone the light on the amount of money we're losing actually uh, it was not calculated by them the, the research based on economic impact of social media and you know especially platforms like Twitter was actually collated is a, a very extant academic literature based on research and data from World, um, World Bank, you know, Boston Consulting Group, MIT, Harvard, right? And there's actually a mathematical formula, so it is not rocket science. Everybody can actually go there and calculate it, right? There's a, and like I said, there's a site where you just calculate it, and it's called net blockers, and you used to calculate the amount of loss that we get. Because, for example, averagely, uh, the, there's something you call the internet economy. Right, every organ, every country has internet co economy. For example, organizations, countries like US, has clo close to about 12 percent of their GDP based on the internet economy. Right, and that's been recorded that uh, in in developing countries like Nigeria, we have about close to about 4 percent of our GDP coming from the internet economy. People don't even pay attention to that. Right, but then you you understand that the reason why this affects the youth a lot is because the youths are the ones that benefit majorly from this, right? You have your influencer marketing. A lot of people have built, you know, you know your, um, 
your comedians, so these micro, uh, micro short films that you just watch for entertainment. A lot of people have built follow, followership on that platform. And they've been able to get endorsement from organizations, you know, that will pay them to advertise products. So what that does is that, especially because most of them built that platform on, on Twitter. Because Twitter, uh, we have about close to more than 23 million Nigerians on Twitter, right? And so once they close that, it means that everything mm. goes down. That's, that's just on influencer marketing alone. When you now come to freelancers who make their daily living on Twitter, that also shuts that, them down. Then you have your startups, right? Your, innovation, your startups, you know, right, right now the startup ecosystem is trying to boom, but then there are a lot of challenges that because as a result of the fact that you are just in Nigeria, it becomes a big headache for you, right? So a lot of people connect with their investors, with their customers, right on Twitter. Okay. Let's, uh, <laughs> hold on. Let, 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 let's look at it this way. Mm -hmm. In every situation, yeah. we should expect the negative aspect of yeah. it. In this situation, where we're not expecting such to happen, because when you are doing business, you should expect that um, there will be a loss mm. someday. Mm. So, mm. how prepared should we be for on, this kind of on, occurrence? On, if unfortunately, mm. right, uh, this is not an occurrence that is is very rampant. You only see it in very rare conditions where the government bans because basically this is like your digital rights. You should have rights to communication, right? You should right and we, we all know what caused the ban was because the government was not happy that that platform pulled down their post on the platform, right? And normally that, that's why you see a lot of word powers rebuking or coming against that decision. That that's not that's you're banning the digital rights of and one thing about Nigeria is following a very dangerous precedent. You could go check the statistics. Countries that ban digital network provider, um, social media, all these platforms, are, are countries that are basically in uh, crisis, maybe political crisis, and they don't want to you know, silence and oppress their people. So you could check it. Um, the only about Nigeria is now part of the only three or four countries that do not allow Twitter now. You have South Korea, and we know what is happening in South Korea and North Korea, right? You know what is happening. China to also ban them. So there are a lot of countries like that that just banned, and those countries are not uh, very good examples to follow, it, especially when it comes to digital rights and all those things, and you no know, advocacy, uh, democracy itself. Because mm -hmm. because if, if there's a it's kind of government that silences the voice of its people, it's, it's, it's very terrible. And that's it's a very dangerous precedence. Uh, that Nigeria is really for Okay, what about the side. blackout? Because we are dealing with electronics. Yes. And okay. dealing with um, connectivity. Yeah. So yeah. shouldn't we expect so, that? So now, now so that that's so the blackout is quite different from the ban. So mm -hmm. ban is you know legislative power or the government power Impose uh, imposing people. that this uh, um, this platform should be banned. So what happened to 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 um, Facebook and all that? Uh, it's it's a warning sign. Honestly, I feel like everybody should then begin to think about contingency plans, mm -hmm. like you said, because that was basically un un unfortunately unlike unlike those kind of uh, global organizations that they don't tell. Actually, there was actually no warning at all. Mm. But it was quite, it was quite very shocking, yeah, very shocking. And, and then I know they came out to try and uh, try to explain what really caused it. But then from time to time, um, I think moving forward, organizations begin to think about it. Mm. So what happens if our major platform to reach customers mm. goes down? Should we have plan do B? We, do we have plan B? Exactly. Mm. Uh, and it's good that there are more than one platform. Mm. So it means that you should always think about can we have all our, our, our communication channels across these platforms and not just focus on one? Because if what happens if they go down, just like, like what we just saw? Okay. Uh, and, and it's just very, very important that we begin to well, think about Facebook, it. Facebook uh, claimed the outage uh, was caused uh, by configuration changes yes. to the routers in the Facebook data centers. Okay. Uh, that uh, is highly technical. Mm -hmm. you know, can, you, can you break that down? First? Okay. Okay, so basically, right, uh, every... Now, let's try to break it down for the, for the level. So every communication that we... You know, people basically what they did is create a central server. They have a server, and the funny thing is that they always have contingency plans for that server. So in case in case one server breaks down, right, all your information, your communication doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. And so, but then what happened is that they were they were trying to, I believe, upgrade, right, which um, due to maybe a lot of bugs and all that, they had to upgrade. But then the issue basically is that every of your communication resides on a server. A server prov provides that service, right? It provides a platform, provides a place where you can store your data. Provide, that's why you can back up your, you know, you can back up your chat history. Everything has to reside somewhere, 
right? So what happens is that once there's a disconnect, even if you still have the app on your phone, because that, that's what you call your client, is there's a server and there's a client side of an application. Server is where the central you know, processing power, storage power control is, and the client is what receives that service and all those um, information as well. So once there's a disconnect, from the client app, which is on your phone, from the major server, mm. which is wherever um, Facebook is, uh, you would, even if you still have the app, you would not be able to So should we expect and more, that's what, more blackouts? I, I don't think, because um, if you saw what happened within the short hours, uh, even it's that it's six hours, not <laughs> yeah, short hours, it's that affected no, the, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, it's quite, it's quite short. short. Six it's quite hours. Short. In the grand scheme of things, we, we are saying this because we understand the impact, right? But in the grand scheme of things, six hours is how many and hours? Of, how many hours have we not had power? <laughs> yeah. so, so, so basically, that for about six hours, right? So the, the point basically that I'm trying to make is that even in the in the grand scheme of things, that what happened within that six hours personally affected the CEO in terms of his own personal words, yeah. right? Stocks fell immediately and things like that. So so. In the grand scheme of things, it's no good for even the organization to allow such things to happen. Okay. But then, would this still happen in the future? Probably, yes. The you know, technology moves so fast, and there are a lot of challenges that sometimes you might not even be able to emphasize. So, mm. it might still happen once, uh, once again, but then everybody should also ask. Facebook is creating their own contingency plans. Individuals should also create their own okay, contingency yeah. okay. plans. Yes. <laughs> Nigerians, yeah. so now we have the Ministry of Communication and Data Economy. Yeah. Uh, are we really leveraging on ICT? Mm. I know we have guys, we have tech guys, we talk mm. about uh, Inyolua, Abueji, yeah. who, owns, who confounded the Flutter Waves. Yeah. Uh, we had of, I mean, pay tax, yeah. you know, sold for millions of yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, do we need to do, do we need to see more of that? Now, this is a very interesting question because right now, uh, the startup ecosystem or the technology ecosystem in Nigeria is as the, it's at its peak right now, like it's growing so fast. For the first time in the history of the nation, even in the history of the continent, we have what we call about five unicorns. Unicorns are companies with one billion dollar um, eval valuation mark. And for the first time in the history of this, this nation, we have about five. Uh, in, in this nation, in right? Nigeria. In Nigeria. And that, uh, that, what that did was that immediately it, uh, it pulled us up in the ranking of the best startup ecosystems in Africa. So right now you have Nigeria, then you have your um, South Africa and Kenya. I think that's, that's the other one. Kenya, South Africa, I can't remember. But Nigeria right now is number one. Based on startup genome report and um, uh, startup um, tech report and things like that. So it's a global report, basically. And Nigeria has been ranked number one. But I, my point is that these guys, I feel, are based on the, based on the, the, the look of things. Mm. Those guys are making it despite Nigeria, not majorly because of Nigeria, mm. right? There are a lot of all those. It's building a startup in Nigeria automatically makes ensures that you, you are at some point automatically disadvantaged. Okay. Right? Looking at the innovations now <laughs> yeah. that is going on in tech uh, mm -hmm. sector, can we say Nigerian is Nigerians are, are making wave? Mm. Yes, they are making wave. Yes, yes, yes. Can we say Nigeria can stand on their own? Looking at the tech sector, can we stand on our own, have our applications, and run on it? Oh, okay. You mean? Because I have to be very sure what you mean by stand on. Like okay. build our solutions our ourselves. Solutions so ourselves. Maybe, those those companies build their solutions. For example, FlutterWeb is a payment mm. uh, payment um, solution. We have Paystack, also a payment uh, solution. Intersuite as well, also a payment solution. Then we have your Andela. Andela is just a, a, a that's not a digital solution, but it's a solution that builds talents and then deploys them into into market that needs them. And then you have your different organizations like that uh, that basically build a digital solution. Uh, like your Kuda Bank and all those things, built a digital solutions that actually solve problems. So Nigeria is actually creating real life solutions. Okay. Uh, right? So we are, we are doing that. What, what we just want is that we need to begin to do more of that and then build people and we know how to build the solutions. Okay, can we do communication solutions in case um, Facebook is out of it? We just switch to the Nigeria version of it and everything will just go well with us. Yes. Um, uh, <laughs> I think that already there are quite a number of uh, communication solutions, right? But then, you know, 
if you're building any kind of you know, social media digital solutions like that, you need to think about it from a global perspective, not just from the Nigerian context, right? Um, no, when, when Twitter got banned, there was uh, this, well, I call him a young man, or a man that came up and said, oh, he has a new social media platform that, that, that um, Nigerians can join, join and things like that. But the global appeal of social media is that it doesn't connect countries, that it connects you on a global stage. So um, could we have a, a, such a platform that, mm -hmm. that comes from Nigeria but connects people globally? Sure, I think we can. Uh, but then it, it takes quite a lot really uh, to get that. And then maybe hopefully in the next coming years we'll see, see one coming out of Nigeria. Okay. okay. Uh, well, uh, the, uh, as we round off, uh, the advancement in IT or ICT mm -hmm. uh, poses new challenges. We have our cars, we have first internet fosters, mm -hmm. many mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. uh, these days. So what would be your advice you know, to the people? How can they ensure safety, you know, mm -hmm. safety of your accounts? Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great question. Right? Uh, I think everybody needs to understand that the landscape of things is changing. There's an acceleration of digital technologies and innovations, and also it comes with stress, like you mentioned, you know, uh, cyber security, internet fraud. So I think that the first thing is to, is to advocate for digital literacy. First, you need to understand this technology and how they work. Because so I, the, the big, I think the, the, the easiest cause for people to fall for it is because of, they don't have understanding or knowledge of how this thing works. So we need to start with digital literacy. Educate our children, educate our our, our fathers and our mothers and sisters, this is how you use. If you see this kind of stuff, run away from it. Mm -hmm. And then also very, very important that you also try as much as possible as to protect your data. Data is going to be the future. So make sure that you protect your data, don't expose your data anywhere and anyhow and things like that. So basically, um, just protect data. I think for me, the key f foundation for everything is that we advocate for digital literacy. We need more organizations who go into schools to educate our people, go into a civil organization to educate our people. Because if we have that foundational block, then you can begin to build on it. Uh, and, then, uh, and then also, I think for, for Nigeria becoming popular for, for what you call, you call them internet fosters, but in Nigeria we call them Yahoo and, and things like that. Uh, and for me, I, I believe that one of the major reasons is maybe the economic conditions, but also aware okay. of the kind of opportunities available in the tech world. Is you can make big money in a good way, basically. Okay, <laughs> and that's, that's where we leave it. Thank um, you. Digital literacy uh, is key. Uh, Mr. Shewo Amsat has really established uh, that uh, for us. So thanks for honoring our invitation. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Tech Business yeah. Development Manager and Data of Data Science in Nigeria. So uh, well, uh, this is where we draw the curtain on today's edition of the program. Do have a lovely day. Bye for now. Thank you.